Hello, uh, my name is Gabriel Kirk. I'm Oscar Valle. I'm Daniel Macias. And my name is Shadi Dorazi. And our faculty advisor for this project is Song Wakong. Um, today's presentation will be on computational design of aluminum nanoparticles on rocket fuel using reactive molecular dynamic simulations. So our research objective for this will be to design aluminum nanoparticles for alternative rocket fuel. Right there is an example image of an aluminum, aluminum nanoparticle through AMS uh, molecular dynamics. Our problem will be that liquid fuel such as uh, gasoline, diesel are very common, but rely on depleting resources. The major drawbacks of liquid fuel is that they emit carbon dioxide and that there's going to be a shortage of fossil fuel reserves in the long term. Aluminum particles, on the other hand, can be used as a solid fuel alternative, and they can also improve fuel efficiency. Aluminum can be the key to limiting uh, carbon dioxide emissions and helping with this fossil fuel usage. So why aluminum? Well, aluminum is the most abundant crystal metal on Earth. It is characterized by valuable mechanical, electrical, and thermal properties, and also has a low density. Aluminum nanoparticles, or ANPs, will have a, have a high surface area, and they also have very high reactivity, which cause short ignition delays. Research involving uh, ANPs involve combustion with ethanol, with uh, neon, and water. Um, combustion with ethanol and ANPs was found to accelerate the ethanol combustion. The combustion with neon wasn't very productive, but it was found that water and ANPs can help oxidize in the layer of the aluminum. And ANPs were also found to, high, to cause high combustion enthalpy and also very low cost as the temperature increased up to 973 Kelvin the rate of the oxidation decreased, but increased in uh, temperature and production. Metal dust was also tested before, um, but with micro-sized aluminum droplets in a solid rocket motor. And the oxidation process was also found to continue to deform ANPs, which cause a increase in temperature in the system. So as the oxidizer mole fraction increases, so does the temperature. The goal for this research is to figure out that most research has been done on aluminum microparticles. So our research is to focus on nanoparticles of aluminum. Um, there's very little research on this, especially with combinations of different molecules or additives. Um, ANPs have the potential as a solid fuel and to improve rocket fuel which could open doors such as further exploration in space, such as Mars. Our goal is to study the impact of ANPs and combustion with oxygen, water, and methane, and its efficiency for rocket fuel via molecular dynamic simulations. And I'll hand this off over to Shadi. So uh, I went ahead and took care of uh, research methods and um, going to details about that. Um, our approach was actually heavily focused on uh, the Amsterdam modeling suite. Uh, that's called the AMS software. And uh, we had um, used its molecule um, dynamics uh, a lot in our, in our simulations. Um, we, had, we went ahead and also used a reactive force field, which is also known as ReactsFF. Um, in order to get our situation um, for simulations going on about the right situation it should be. And um, we decided to implement thermal behaviors for aluminum um, <clears throat> so that we can be able uh, to get AMPs as a result. Um, you can see that the image that's included right there, that's an image example of an AMS software options. And you can see how there's two ranging temperatures um, that's because we have to go through two thermal cycles, and um, which Oscar and um, Daniel will be getting more into details later on. Um, this is what resulted in our AMP, which we will be using in 
most of our pieces, uh, mixing it with other materials so that we can hopefully find which one has the best results. Um, you can find four simulate, I mean, four cases of simulations right here. Um, all of them are actually uh, 864 atoms of uh, aluminum nanoparticles. And um, on the first case, we can notice that it's actually mixed with 650 oxygen 2 at 400 Kelvin uh, temperature. And uh, our second case was also mixed with the same amount of oxygen, but just at a different temperature of 900 Kelvin. Um, our third case is uh, our aluminum, aluminum nanoparticles mixed with 325 oxygen and 325 H2O, which is water as well, um, at also 900 K Kelvin. And our last case is uh, our aluminum nanoparticles mixed with 325 oxygen and 325 methane at 900 Kelvin as well. So these cases represent all simulations that we were tested. And um, of course, uh, Oscar and Daniel will be um, having more examples and results later on. And as mentioned before, this is um, in box number three, right here. This is how we got our uh, AMP to get into the right simulation and the uh, right figure for us to use and mix with other materials. Um, you can see in the first picture, that's the AI crystal before the heat treatment. And you can kind of, you know, visually tell it still looks solid and it's all compact in place. And the second picture right away shows after the first heat cycle, you can already tell it lost a lot of figure, it lost a lot of, um, kind of looks discombobulated and it's not, you know, retaining the same shape. And it's the same thing with the uh, second cycle heat treatment as well. But um, this tells you that like it's compacting a lot of space into together and it's just making the space for each another particle smaller, meaning you can carry more. And since they're packing a lot together, um, they're missing on all the air gaps and everything. It's all melted together. It packs a lot of energy and pressure on each nanoparticle. And if you can tell from this graph down here, this is how the temperature uh, cycle went like um, each um, highest tip right here is the highest temperature we put it up to, which is about 1,000. And you can tell it goes down and back up again for the second cycle so that it gets it ready. And yeah, that's, that's it for me right now. I'll go ahead and give it to Oscar for it to take off. Thank you. Okay, so my section was working with um, um, section four, which is MD results, on um, the burning of AMPs with different temperatures. Uh, I had to focus on pretty much, we had to first start by understanding how like low temperatures and high temperatures affected aluminum nanoparticles. And we used the AMS software and Ovido to produce these figures and try to see and understand whether or not there was a difference and the efficiency of nanoparticle, aluminum nanoparticles with um, the burning of oxygen on them. As you can see here, there's two different um, scenarios. We first ran the, we began by running the simulation at 400 Kelvin. And we did this for 1 million steps to try to get a more credible and efficient result. And by the looks of it, both 400 Kelvin and the 900 Kelvin um, simulation runs, they look similar, but it's um, visible that at the 900 Kelvin, you could see that more of the oxygen molecules were absorbed by the aluminum as opposed to the 400 Kelvin. And just by looking at this, it is already like clear that by using a high temperature system on aluminum nanoparticles, that the system does um, react better. And we also had two different graphs, one explaining the number of molecules absorbed and then the relative potential energy versus time. Both the, the, the blue line represents 400 Kelvin and the red line represents 900 Kelvin. And as you can see, the gap um, demonstrates how, how many oxygen molecules were absorbed as opposed to 400 Kelvin. The gap right there is it's clear that using running the system on a high temperature does in fact create a more efficient system. Um, 
at a 900 degrees Kelvin, the system did release more energy as opposed to the 400 degree Kelvin. And also the amount of potential energy that was released was also much greater than the 400 degrees Kelvin. Um, the first and second one shows how the aluminum particles oxidize and attract the oxygen around it. And by doing this, it is clear that using a higher temperature will in fact be better for our experiment. And since we confirmed that using a high temperature is better, we began using other molecules that would in fact um, try to see whether or not other molecules will help this combustion process. And Daniel will talk to you more about it and then I'll let him talk about that right now. Thank you. So I'm presenting our MD results number three, burning aluminum nanoparticles with different reactants at 900 Kelvin. So after we find out that our 900 Kelvin simulation released more energy, we decided to run more simulations with different reactants at the same temperature to see if we could get more energy release. Supported by our poster pictures and graph, we concluded that our aluminum plus water simulation released more energy than our aluminum plus methane, but less than our original simulation aluminum plus oxygen. We believe this is the case because the simulation with greatest access to oxygen had the greatest amount of O2 separation. Now I'm going to hand it over to Gabriel to conclude the presentation. All right, thank you. Yes. All right, so that concludes our project. Um, we found that our molecular dynamic results revealed a fundamental understanding of aluminum nanoparticle combustion at the atomic level. And therefore our computational work can help guide experimental design of ANPs for the use of alternative rocket fuel. Um, this will help with carbon dioxide emissions and the use of fossil fuel and will further our space navigation, and other fuel industries. Um, image right there is us as a crew, uh, California State University, Bakersfield. And we also would like to send a special acknowledgement to Chevron for sponsoring this 2022 SURE program. Um, thank you for the support. Students like us wouldn't be able to do this without companies like you and your support. Our references there are seen at the bottom for all our research that went into this project. Thank you for your time.